With Kung Fu Panda 4 hitting theaters this weekend, I went back and watched the first three. Now, I'm not going to do individual reviews of all these movies. I just decided to put them all into one video because I only have so much to say about them. But I do, in a way, still have a lot to say about them because... Real quick, just to run my quick history with the Kung Fu Panda franchise. It's a franchise that started back when I was in high school. And I remember I watched that first film and thought it was a lot better than a lot of people had anticipated. And I remember I watched it then and I thought it was a lot better than I anticipated. And really, in retrospect, I think the Kung Fu Panda franchise is just one of those animated franchises that is a lot better than it had any right to be, but against all odds and against everyone's better judgment, it really is a lot better. And this is one of the few DreamWorks franchises that's actually good. And personally, I love DreamWorks animation, but it's not my favorite animation studio. But they've made franchises that I've enjoyed and appreciated, like Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda. But the Kung Fu Panda franchise is one of those franchises I will always have a spot in my heart for just because of how good they are and they didn't have to go as hard as they did now the first one it follows poe he is a panda in which he wants to learn kung fu and then when he barges in on the day when the dragon warrior is chosen he accidentally gets chosen and so master shifu he has to try to train poe but then master shifu he learns the best way to train poe is through food which is basically poe's weakness and strength it is basically the whole film just learning how to learn kung fu and use kung fu in your own little way instead of the traditional way and that first film is also one of those movies that just gets better upon multiple rewatches and it really does now of course the animation even for 2018 was great the voice acting is on par Jack Plack, he plays the voice of Poe, and Jack Plack, he's not one of my favorite comedic actors, but for some reason, whenever he lends his voice to something, I usually enjoy him. Because one of the themes of this movie is just being the best you that you can be, and that's a theme that remains throughout the entire series, and it remains throughout the Poe character. And I just enjoyed Poe's journey throughout this entire film and on the other films, which I'll get into in a little bit. But I will say, he did get annoying at times because he was just a bubbling idiot, and he just just doesn't know how to stop and apparently he just doesn't know how to stop eating like bro stop eating like like at the point in the movie where he is just in that kitchen just breaking everything trying to find food and master shifu he barges in on him like every time poe was just eating for no reason i was like hermione in the harry potter movies Now, surprisingly, on this watch, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed Master Shifu's story in this film because his story does play into the villain in the movie, Tai Lo, who is voiced by Ian McShane, and then Master Shifu. He is voiced by Dustin Hoffman, who is, who is other than Jack Black, is my favorite voice actor in this film. Because Master Shifu, he has just total disdain for Poe and why he was chosen as the Dragon Master. He doesn't understand it. But then you also come to find out that Master Shifu trained Tai Lo in the ways of Kung Fu. But then Tai Lo, he becomes jealous with power and he wants to be the Dragon Warrior. But Master Uwe, the turtle, he says no. And then Tai Lo, he just goes ape shit and destroys everything. And then Master Shifu, he just couldn't have the heart to stop Shifu. And then when Tylo does come back, Shifu, he is finally at peace with himself and he realizes that he loved him so much that he just couldn't see what Tylo was turning into. And that also plays into Poe's story. Like Shifu, he's essentially the secondary character of this story that plays into the arc of the first film. Then you also get The Furious Five in which you have Tigress voiced by Angelina Jolie, Crane voiced by David Cross, Mantis, voiced by Seth Rogen, Viper, voiced by Lucy Liu, and Monkey, voiced by Jackie Chan, who is the only person that actually knows Kung Fu in this movie, and yet he has some of the least lines. And then there's Poe's adopted father, who is a goose, who is trying so hard to get Poe to join the family business, but Poe's like, no. <laughs> I even like all the hand-drawn elements in this film in which it was used for the past or the dream sequences. In the end, Kung Fu Panda 1, it is a lot better than I remember, and it just gets better from here. I'm going to give Kung Fu Panda 1 the heart eyes emoji. Next is Kung Fu Panda 2, in which it takes place after the first film. Poe, he is integrated well with the Furious Five, and they've built up their own little rapport with each other, and they accept him, and they're out just fighting bad guys together. But then the villain of this movie is a peacock voiced by Gary Oldman, and he's the best voice actor in this film, I must say, because 
the Peacock, I for, I'm blanking on his name, but the Peacock, he is out for revenge. And this is a lot darker film too. But I remember when the second film came out, I still prefer the first film. It does advance Poe's story a little bit, but at the same time, I just remember walking away from it and not being too thrilled with it. But I am thrilled with it now, though it's still not my favorite, which I'll get into in a little bit. But this film really is darker than the first film because it advances the story and it goes into Poe's parentage in which he was part of a panda village, but then that got wiped out and then, but then he also comes to terms with his adopted father, which who is the goose. Master Shifu does return in this film and he is finally at inner peace and that's something that he tries to teach Poe because again, Poe is, he's struggling with what his past really is. And then once he just lets go of his past and he will have inner peace and he can do great things. But to go back to the Furious Five real quick, I love Tigress and I just love how she progresses with her relationship with Poe because in the first movie, like she was jealous, she had no, she wanted nothing to do with Bo, and she she did not understand why he was chosen as the dragon warrior. But then she does warm up to him a little bit, and she does learn to tolerate his dumb fuckery. And you can tell the two of them have genuine friendship and respect for one another, even if he annoys her from time to time. And that point is driven home once she finds out what happened to Paul's parents, and she gives him a hug. I mentioned Gary Oldman as the voice actor stand out in this film. I also got to mention Michelle Yeoh, which at the time she was not an Oscar winner, but now she is. And hearing her in this movie was like, she was always great. A lot of people say that Kung Fu Panda 2 is their favorite in the franchise, and I'm not going to argue that. But for me, it's not particularly my favorite, but that does not mean I think it's a bad film or not as good as the first film. I think both of them are on par with each other, but I just prefer the first film. But regardless, it's still a worthy sequel. I'm going to give Kung Fu Panda 2 the hard eyes emoji. And then finally, there's Kung Fu Panda 3, in which... This is probably the only Kung Fu Panda movie that I actually saw in the theater. It came out in 2016, in which Poe, he finally meets his biological father, who is voiced by Brian Cranston. They meet up with each other, and of course, the goose, he is heated. He's not, he's a little jealous. He gets word that he's being taken away from him. And, then, and in this movie, I'll say this is the movie where the spoken lessons speak to me more than the lessons in the other movies. Because the goose, he goes through his own little arc in this movie because he's afraid that that the Brian Cranston panda is taking Poe away from him. And he says in the movie, he thought he thinks that's less for him, but then he realizes that's more for Poe and, and that there's room for both dads in this film. But this movie as a whole, I've always liked more than two for some reason. And again, it might just because this is the only Kung Fu Panda movie as of now that I've seen in the theater. But hey, I'm just a sucker for a good story about family and fatherhood. But I also like the opening of this movie in which we see Master Uwe again, and he is mastering Chi. They're in the spirit realm, but then this villain played by J.K. Simmons, he's also a taker of chi, and that's when we also get the lesson from Uwe in which he says, the more you take, the less you'll have, and that spoke to me more. And that lesson definitely spoke to me because that's also a theme of this movie, particularly to the villain. And real quick, I just think it's fascinating that every villain in this movie has something to do with a master. <laughs> now, again, I love Paul's journey in this movie of him learning that, he, that there's room for two fathers, he finds he finds the panda village and he learns about his heritage within the pandas and he just learns how just to be himself again just a fat lazy panda which all the other pandas do and of course the animation improved in the second film and it improves even more in this film but i like how poe he basically teaches all the other pandas the lesson that he learned in the first movie in which shifu had to train poe via food which goes back to the lesson of that film which is be the best you you can be and he teaches all the other pandas how to use their traits as their strengths in kung fu the action also improved in the second film and it definitely improves even more in this film and in the end i thought kung fu panda 3 was also a great conclusion to this trilogy right here i feel like it wrapped up everything so perfectly and beautifully now i don't know what's about to happen for the fourth film but i can only imagine that they're gonna put that same level of care and respect into this film because like i said all three of these films they had no right to be as good as they were but they work i'm gonna give kung fu panda 3 the hard eyes emoji as well so yeah hard eyes emoji for all three of these films across the board so i can definitely say this was a pretty solid trilogy that is on par with the toy story trilogy while it was still a trilogy the fourth film of toy story ended up being good so this might be the case for Kung Fu Panda, and if it is, 
we can def we can definitely say that that's two animated franchise with four films and all four of them were good. Let's hope.